Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live. My name is Robert Govea. I am a criminal defense attorney broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun, deep in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. And I'm grateful you are here and with us on this beautiful start to a new week. Hopefully you had an amazing Easter. I certainly did. Went down, visited the family in Tucson. Shout out to my Aunt Linda, Uncle Terry, Uncle John, Aunt Dina, Cousin Carrie. You all know who you are. Great time down there. Hopefully yours was amazing as well. Easter was here and hopefully you enjoyed it because it very well may be our last. Tonight we're talking about warfare. We've got two different segments to unpack. Big issues are percolating. The U.S. military is having problems keeping some of their materials classified. And we're going to go through this today because there is some interesting stuff. John Kirby was in the White House really kind of outraged about this. They're publishing some documents and more documents get published and more documents get published. And Kirby is just outraged. So we're going to go through a bunch of different clips from him. The media was beating him up over this. Remember, you know, how much the media loves their classified documents. And if these are classified documents that are not in Trump's residence, they're not in Biden's sock drawers. These are just floating around on the internet, on Twitter and on Telegram and on other places. And John Kirby is outraged. The media has a ton of questions about this. Are you changing protocols? Are there gonna be consequences for this? They are actually opening up criminal investigations, as you might imagine, the DOJ's on this. We also have the DOD's on this. Everybody, FBI, they are unleashing them to go figure out who has these documents and where are they coming from? So a lot of interesting questions about this. And it begs the question about, you know, what are the consequences as these documents are revealed to some of the ongoing engagements that the U.S. is involved in, in particular with Ukraine. Several questions about that. Are Ukrainian efforts compromised? Is another bomb going to be dropping here? Are you going to be speaking with Zelensky? We have all the details on what is in this top secret classified documents, and we'll go through some of them here today. Don't actually have the actual documents, but there are good summaries of the documents and I would be cautious with some of these documents because I think that the DOJ is going to come full steam ahead and start prosecuting Lord knows who, all right? So just be careful with this. Remember, we're dealing with a new DOJ and a new FBI. If you missed a prior video today, they're now upset if you say based or red pill, all right? You're on a list somewhere. So just be extra careful out there, my friends. Now, we're gonna go through that. There's updates on the documents. And then this leads into the next question. What else is going on around the world? if it might have some interference with Ukraine, what else is going on in China and Taiwan? Now, there were a bunch of military efforts in this region of the world, and China says that they are ready to fight. There were military exercises. They were talking about their launch plans. This was an animation that the Chinese posted up on their state media saying, we're just getting ready to, you know, unleash on Taiwan. While all that's happening, the Taiwan defense, the ROC is responding and the U.S. military is conducting some naval exercises. John Kirby got asked about this as well, asking about the confidence in this relationship. Is the United States going to really be backing up Taiwan? The French are saying to hell with Lady Liberty. Good luck to you guys. And we're asking if there's going to be any response. Now, why all this matters, of course, is because the U.S. doesn't just not get involved in any of this. They're talking about U.S. troops potentially being sent over to defend Taiwan. McCall, who's on the Foreign Affairs Committee, talked about this. Lindsey Graham is talking about this. They're all saying we're open to U.S. troops because why not? And then we have our final clip asking, is China getting ready to launch? Some people are having deja vu. You remember about a year ago, about 14 months ago now, we had a situation where the Russians were moving a bunch of stuff around and they were saying that these were exercises and these are just war games and nothing's imminent and no, our 8,500 troops are going to dissuade them. And so some people are having you know flashbacks from all of the other bundled foreign affairs that this White House has gotten us into. So as you can see, my friends, we have a lot to get to today. And if you want to be a part of the show, head on over to our amazing community, watchingthewatchers.locals.com where we do extra member only content. We do morning streams where we have some, you know, kind of, you know, more, more casual conversations. It's a great time. We have a private telegram group. If you're a YouTube member, you get access to the private telegram group. And we also have after parties. So when we're done here on the mainstream, 
We also hang out after the show. So a lot of extra stuff, great way to connect with other people and develop a deeper connection with an actual community online. We also want to say shout out to our friends. Now we've got some heavy lifting to do. And if there's going to be nuclear radiation and World War III, you know, percolating all over the world, we got to make sure that we're healthy and we can sustain it. And also some of us, you know, may have had ourselves a little bit too much chocolate cream pie yesterday. Okay. If you know what I'm saying. So it's time to get back on track, which is why we have to focus on losing those extra Easter pounds and also getting prepared for World War III fighting weight. And how sick are you of all of these fads for weight loss pills and fad diets and all this stuff? You know, we've all heard them. We've all been there. We've all tried all that stuff. They just don't work. But you know what does? Eating healthy, eating five servings of fruits and vegetables every day. You do that and the weight would probably just fall right off. But look, vegetables, not a fan. And fruit, who's got time to prepare that every day? You know, strawberries keep for like two days. It's like ridiculous. Let's talk about Field of Greens. Now, Field of Greens, as you can see on your screen, is a science-backed formula very specific fruits and vegetables that you're not going to find in any other product. We know that proper nutrition reboots your metabolism so you burn calories faster and lose weight the healthier way. And Field of Greens is the only brand backed by a better health promise. Yes, you're going to look healthier and feel healthier fast, but the greater proof is going to come at your next checkup when your doctor says, wow, you've lost weight, whatever you're doing, keep it up. And so let's get you started. Go on over to fieldofgreens.com. Don't forget to use code Robert when you check out promo code Robert at fieldofgreens.com. It's going to be a great decision. You can see it makes the vegetables happy. They want to be eaten. That's why they're here. They pop out of the ground. Look at these little corn on the cob, man. Eat him. All right. Get your field of greens at fieldofgreens.com. Don't forget to use code Robert. All right. And so let's get right into it. Into the meat and potatoes on the day. Put those peeps down. All right, my friends. The leaks keep coming. The U.S. Military Department of Defense having issues keeping the lid on some very sensitive documents that unveil a lot about what's going on with the United States and Ukraine and Russia. So we're going to go through all of that. There is some summations of what these documents contain. We're going to look at the New York Times and Zero Hedge also had a nice summary and some bullet points of what they contain. But John Kirby came out to the White House today and took a lot of questions from the press. And we know how hysterical they get about classified documents. And they were hysterical about Trump's overdue library books. These are actionable military documents that are talking about one of the most important things in many journalists' lives, which is this Ukraine war for some reason. So they were there in the White House asking a ton of questions about this. Are these authentic? Are, are you concerned about how long these have been out here? And John Kirby's very upset about it. He says they shouldn't be published, they shouldn't be spread around, and there will be consequences, including a criminal investigation. So we're going to go through all of the different clips and then see where this will lead. Now that many allies know that this sensitive data is out there, does it implicate those relationships? Does it aid the Russians? Does it help the Ukrainian side make a decision about where this goes? Who knows? But the New York Times does give us some background. And so before we dive into the reaction, Let's see what they tell us about these materials. The Times, they write, the leaked documents reveal the depth of the U.S. spy efforts and Russia's military struggles. From Washington, they write that a trove of leaked Pentagon documents reveals how deeply Russia's security and intelligence services have been penetrated by the United States. Documents portrayed a battered Russian military that's struggling and they also tell us that they, these documents contain daily real-time warnings to American intelligence agencies on the timing of Moscow strikes. So the U.S. has basically infiltrated major portions of their intelligence network. The source of this leak remains unknown. And it also reveals the American assessment of a Ukrainian military that is itself in dire straits. That's not something you hear a lot about. Normally, it's about how great they're doing and how terrible the Russians are doing. But the Ukrainian military is in dire straits. And we often ask ourselves, why are these leaks happening? Are they trying to instigate and cause a reaction? You know, there's always an action and a reaction, and they often are thinking these through. They are the so-called intelligence agencies. The leaked material from late February, early March, but it's found on social media in recent days, outlines critical shortages of air defense munitions and discusses the gains being made by Russian troops. 
The intelligence also seems to indicate the United States is spying on Ukraine's top military and their political leaders. Uh Uh-oh. Does that include Zelensky? A reflection of Washington's struggle to get a clear view of their strategies. Now, the material reinforces ideas that the U.S. has a clear understanding of these operations, but the leak has potential to do real damage to Ukraine's war effort by exposing which Russian agencies to the United States knows the most about, giving Moscow an opportunity to cut off the sources. If Moscow is leaking like a sieve, now they know, and now they can fix all the problems. Current and former officials say it's too soon to know the extent of the damage. The leak has already complicated relations with allied countries. Hmm, that's a bummer. I thought that Joe Biden was a master of diplomacy who was going to be an adult who's going to not allow these things to happen. After reviewing the documents, a senior Western intelligence official said the release was painful and suggested that it could curb intelligence sharing. Documents could also hurt diplomatic ties in other ways. The United States is not just spying on Russia, but also on its allies. That's going to hardly surprise different countries, but it might have problems with countries like South Korea, who is needed to help the Ukrainian supply chain. So they want briefs. Congress is saying, give us an update. Where is all of this coming from? The trove is about 100 pages long. New York Times has reviewed more than 50 of those pages. They were appearing online in photographs. And they launched an inquiry on Friday. The FBI jumped into this thing. And senior officials are freaking out. Now, we're going to go through this and listen to John Kirby here in a quick minute. He is saying that these documents are looking like they're authentic. He's not confirming they're authentic, but the story, as we'll hear, is that he can't say that they are not, he can't say that they are inauthentic. And they're panicking about the documents, which sort of leads one to deduce that maybe it is authentic. Thanks, John. I understand that you're saying some of these documents might have been altered, but is it your assessment that at least some of them are authentic? We know that some of them have been doctored. I won't speak to the validity of all the documents, uh, the, the ones that uh, you know that, that, that don't Im- immediately appear to be doctored. We're still working through the validity of uh, all the documents that we know are, are out there. Uh, the Department of Defense, Defar- Department of Defense has stood up uh, uh, and interagency the effort to try to look at the national security implications, which includes taking a look at these documents to determine whether they're actually valid or not. And I'm just not in a position to speak to, to that work, which is ongoing. All right, so they are continuing to investigate it, but it certainly sounds like it's a little bit authentic. Now, when they asked John Kirby about this, the documents have already you know, been floating around out there for a long period of time. They're trying to scrub them and trying to identify the sources on this thing. But they've been floating around for a bit. And you've got to imagine the Russians, you know, they have access to 4chan and they have access to Twitter and so on. And so Kirby is saying they shouldn't have access to this at all. These should not be republished. On the documents, is the White House concerned about the period of time that elapsed from when they were posted to when they sort of gained attraction? We're worried that uh, these documents are out there, ma'am. They shouldn't be out there, period. That's the big worry. Um, And then trying to figure out how that happened. And uh, I'm sure as a part of that, uh, the timeline will be looked at as well. But the main concern is that they're out there, period. They don't need to be, shouldn't be. Absolutely shouldn't be in the public domain. Yeah, it shouldn't be. They reveal a bunch of sensitive information. So there is a brief that is taking place. The president was familiarized with all of this. Let's take a quick look, though, at a little bit more detail about what these documents contain. This was a nice summation of the documents from Zero Hedge, written by Tyler Durden, posted April 10th. U.S. is spying on Zelensky. Here's what we know. Now, the media will give you a nice summation of it, but this is, I think, a a summation of the media. And so this says that the highly classified documents, which began being confirmed as authentic by the New York Times, which we just read, and others in recent days, has sent the defense officials scrambling. CNN also confirmed on Monday, based on one of the documents which appeared online, that the U.S. has been spying on Zelensky, a disclosure which has caused officials in Kyiv to be deeply frustrated. So here's sort of a censored, redacted version of what one of the documents looks like. It's sort of blurred out, but you can see it's a document that causes, you know, has a bunch of different 
blocks and maps and different locations. And it looks pretty official, right? It looks like it's something that would be, this is part of a series of another hundred videos or a or hundred uh, pictures, but somebody's taking photographs of these things and then sharing them. Now, obviously, again, that is the redacted version of that. It's blurred out. You can't read it. But here, one document reveals that the U.S. has been spying on Zelensky, saying that's unsurprising. The U.S. intelligence document suggests that American officials have been worried about Zelensky decision making and other decisions to strike into NATO territory. Now, there's a nice summation of some bullet points on this. They say, here are 14 major revelations contained within that 100 image cache of other documents. Pretty serious stuff here. One, locations of CIA recruitment efforts focused on human agents, which have access to closed door conversations of world leaders. Closed door conversations of world leaders. CIA efforts to get human agents inside rooms with other world leaders. That's a pretty big one. Russia's Wagner Group tried to obtain weapons from a NATO member called Turkey. Also, some of the internal future plans of the Wagner are apparently known to U.S. intelligence. There's also details of sensitive satellite technology used to track Russian forces, namely a Lapis time series video. This is an advanced satellite system, which is, until now has been a closely guarded secret. Right, So this is serious stuff. Now, obviously, the details are not here, but these documents contain the details. Ukrainian battlefield assessments prepared by the Pentagon. The Guardian is reporting they reviewed one slide. They said one slide suggested that a small contingent of less than 100 special operations personnel from NATO, France, America, Britain, Latvia were already active in Ukraine, right? So NATO special forces active in Ukraine. Descriptions of intelligence collection activities by the CIA, the NSA, the DIA, law enforcement agencies, and the NRO. Battlefield situation reviews, talking about the Donbass grinding campaign of attrition, saying that Russia is likely heading towards a stalemate, thwarting Moscow's goal, goal to capture the entire region. So a stalemate, not a loss, is what they're talking about. Wonder how that's sitting with Ukraine. The Washington Post reported that the U.S. intelligence community has penetrated the Russian military and its commanders so deeply that it can warn Ukraine in advance of strikes. Another page reveals that the U.S. intelligence community knew that the Russian Ministry of Defense had transmitted plans to blow up a number of bridges. They talk about Ukrainian air defenses. They talk about Israel's Mossad supported protests about Netanyahu. It's everything, man. It's a ton of stuff. One report says internal discussions show that the South Korean officials are wary of requests to hand over artillery shells to the United States because they're concerned they're going to end up in Ukraine. So the South Koreans don't want to be involved in this mess either. Another report talks about Ukrainian air defense being in peril if it's not reinforced by Western allies. So we have a lot of questions about these documents and about, you know, the legitimacy of them and who they are coming from and the accuracy of what's contained in them. But the Pentagon, John Kirby and others are being asked about this and they're responding, telling us that there is a full investigation wide open. FBI, DOJ, all of the DOD coming in hot to make sure they stop these leaks and get to the bottom of it. Thanks, uh, John. If we can start on the, uh, the classified document leaks, um, has the president been briefed on this breach? And does the U.S. government at this point have any sense of who was behind it? The president has been briefed. He was uh, first briefed late last week uh, when uh, when we all got word that uh, there were some documents out there, uh, and he has been stayed. Uh, briefed and in contact with national security officials uh, throughout the weekend. So he has been briefed. And as for the source, as you know, the Department of Defense has referred this to the Department of Justice for a criminal investigation. And I certainly would refer you to them, but I'm not aware that they've come to any conclusions at this point about where they're coming from. And just to follow up on that, um, at this point, do you believe the leak is contained? Are there more documents out there that have not been released publicly? Is this an ongoing threat? We don't know. We truly don't. Crazy.
So they don't even know, you know, they don't even know who this person is. And there are questions about the timing and about whether they are sep you know, one of the ways they will track who's leaking stuff is they'll offer different versions to different people and they'll see what version is being leaked. And then they'll be able to trace that back to the source. So they don't know, or they're not telling us, but there will be consequences as you can imagine. Kirby has asked about potential penalties. Are they going to be prosecuting these people? Is there an investigation ongoing? What are the consequences going to be? Can you lay out what the consequences will be for the people or the person responsible for the leaks of these classified information? And secondly, have you been able to gauge what their motive is just based on how they've released this information? The answer to both questions is no, I can't. Uh, there's a Justice Department investigation going on right now, uh, a criminal investigation. I'm certainly not going to say anything that would prejudice that. And that work is just starting. So we don't know who's behind this. We don't know what the motive is. And I think I can't remember who asked before, but we don't know what else might be out there. Um, so we've got to let the Department of Defense run their process with the interagency and taking a look at the national security implications of it. And we got to let the Justice Department uh, be able to pursue their investigation again, completely unfettered and, and let the facts and the evidence uh, take them where they may. And, and we'll deal with that on the on the back end message to them or anybody else who's considering leaking information. This is, uh, again, without confirming the validity of the documents, this is information that has no business you confirm in the public them. domain. It has no business, if you don't mind me saying, uh, on the pages of uh, of uh, front pages of, of newspapers or on, on television. Whoa. It is not intended for public uh, consumption and, and it should not be out there. Um, what we're going to try to do is do the best we can to figure out uh, how this happened. Uh, and again, the Justice Department will take it from a, a criminal investigative procedure. And if, uh, uh, if the Defense Department has to change processes, you know, they'll, they'll do that. Um, but uh, I, 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 I think every American can understand, at least I would hope every American can understand, that in order to protect this country every day the way we do, one of the things we have to protect is information. Not only the information itself, but the manner in which we glean that information. Uh, and so I think you can understand why everybody is taking this particular uh, set of disclosures very, very seriously. Pretty amazing that they still don't know where they're coming from. You got to imagine it's a pretty small amount of people who have access to this type of stuff and to adjust the spigots of informational flow. Maybe they've already done it. Now, another reporter asked about whether security protocols were being updated and how this would change what they're currently doing. Obviously, they're in the middle of a protracted conflict in Ukraine. Is this going to change anything? Is this going to change the strategy? Is this an interface between the United States and Ukraine or the Russians hacking it or what's going on here? Thank you, Kareem. Thank you, Kirby. Um, in light of the classified documents, I wonder if you could tell us when was the last time the um, uh, protocol to grant security clearances was updated or revised in the, in the government? And in light of the leaks, does the president believe uh, you should take another look at that. I think uh, the Department of Defense has already uh, started to take a look at distribution, for instance, uh, at, the, at the Pentagon. I'll let them speak to that. I don't know the answer to your question on uh, protocols for who is or who is not uh, granted security clearances. There is already in place and remains in place a very diligent, deliberate effort to manage security clearances. And sometimes uh, we get knocked because it takes a little too long for people's clearances to get approved because the process is, uh, is so careful and, and deliberate. I think to, to your question, I think we just need to be careful right now, speculating or, or guessing what might, behind, what might be behind or who might be behind uh, what looks like uh, a potential leak here of, of classified information. So I, we're going to we need to let the process sort of uh, bear itself out. So are you saying there's a question over whether this was a leak by someone who had access to the I'm materials? saying we don't know, which is why I'm going to, you know, I, I think you're getting to remedies. And I understand that. We're only a couple of days into this. We need to let the Department of Justice 
do their job, investigate this, see what they learn. Now, again, that said, the Department of Defense has already said that they're taking a look at distribution and, and, and looking if, if there's a, um, if there's changes they need to make um, administratively there at, at the Pentagon, since it appears that uh, they are they, they have the, the locus of most of the, the documents. Um, but again, before we start making major muscle movements, we really need to know what we got here uh, and have a better sense from the Justice Department. And there was a big question about where these documents came from and how they got on the Internet in the first place. CNN had some interesting background on this. They say, the documents appeared online last month on the social media platform called Discord, which many of you may be familiar with. We got banned from Discord after January 6. Punks. According to screenshots of the posts reviewed by CNN. Now, the posts are photos of crumpled documents laid on top of magazines and surrounded by other random objects like a, a, a zip clothes bags and Gorilla Glue. It's as if they had been hastily folded up and shoved into a pocket before being removed from a secure location. Huh. A source familiar with these kind of documents told CNN. A Discord spokesman confirmed with the statement in a statement on Sunday that they are cooperating with law enforcement on the investigation. Those documents discovered on Friday all bore classified markings, some top secret, the highest level of classification. It's unclear who is behind the leaks or where exactly they originated. CNN took a look at 53 of them, all appearing to have been produced mid-February, early March. Wide range of documents. Some are authentic, often reveal the degree to which all the different intelligence agencies have been infiltrated. But there's not much on the source, right? It just shows up on Discord randomly, and then it spreads all around the Internet like wildfire and it looks like somebody crumpled up the documents so there will be more now john kirby of course continues to answer questions about this will people lose access to these materials Are security clearance is going to be revoked and he asks a big important question is the united states losing this battle we've been hearing for years about russian hackers and all of these things is this it is it coming to fruition are we under attack where are these documents coming from? Or is it just because our government is incompetent and we have some leaker somewhere? Or have they been compromised? Is this a bigger problem? Or is this just an accident? Somebody accidentally plugged in a hard drive somewhere. John Kirby is asked the question, is America losing this fight? Do you have a sense of the number of people who would have had access to these documents apparently prepared for the joint staff? I do not. Is it hundreds, thousands? I do not. I'd refer you to the Defense Department. And then Given this leak and, and previous leaks, should the American people think that, that the administration is losing the battle against whoever wants to steal our secrets, whether it's foreign adversaries or hackers or not? I think the American people need to know and deserve to know that we're taking this very, very seriously. The president, the president, the president has been briefed on this. He will stay briefed on this. The Department of Defense is looking into this. They are uh, leading an interagency effort here to review whatever national security implications uh, uh, might come out of all this. Uh, and the Department of Justice is, is uh, leading a, a criminal investigation. So we're taking this very, very seriously. There is uh, uh, no uh, excuse for these kinds uh, of documents to be in the public domain. They don't deserve to be they in the, in the public domain. They deserve to be protected. So we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Um, and then if there's actions that need to be taken, uh, as we learn more about the extent of what happened here, we'll obviously take those. It's going to be curious to see if this somehow gets connected to any of the other classified documents cases we've talked about. Not that they're related, but if this punishment, for example, if they say this person, if they are eventually caught, if they should be punished with 20 years in jail or prison for leaking classified documents, and having documents potentially exposed in the public domain, could that be a precedent for Donald Trump to get 20 years, you know, or something like that is where I'm going with that. But Joe Biden not because he's been cooperative with the DOJ. And of course, they are his DOJ. So why not have those double standards? Just an idea. But this, of course, feels like it's a whole different category of items. Donald Trump, many of those documents, we heard they were rumored to be leaks about nuclear codes and stuff. Highly doubt that. It turns out most of it sounded like memorabilia and letters from other world leaders and things like that. 
that would still be sensitive because maybe it's a handwriting from Kim Jong-un or something. So you have this issue, but that feels a little bit different. That is in the hands of a former president, somebody that had security clearance and had protection over this. This is a whole different type of ball game. But I'm still wondering if, you know, we have we have several different classified documents now, and I'm wondering how they're going to deal with each one of them. These are classified documents being, sounds like maliciously leaked, unless they were accidentally leaked. But we've had two caches of them now. So it will continue on. We'll see if Joe Biden gets a different standard than Trump or how this person gets prosecuted. The DOJ is apparently looking into all three of them. We'll see what happens there. Now, as we saw, there were more, hints that this document implicated other world leaders, specifically Zelensky. And there was a very cozy relationship between the United States and this guy for some reason. And they asked him about this. Is Joe Biden going to speak with Zelensky? Is the White House going to be reaching out to him? Are you kind of caught in a bad predicament? Do you have some making up to do? Does he need a couple hundred billion dollars more to help you kind of get over this little mistake? Plans for President Biden to speak with President Zelensky over the leak, or is the White House offering any kind of reassurance to Ukrainian officials about the safety of some of their most sensitive information? U.S. officials have been in touch with uh, relevant allies and partners over the last couple of days at very high levels. I'll leave it at that. Can you speak to not just the potential leak here, but what appears to be some doctoring of the information? Is this something where it's possible that there may have been a leak, but then a different actor came in, manipulated the information and posted it online? What's the working theory in terms of the actual altering of this information? I don't know that we've arrived at a working theory. It does appear that at least in some cases, um, uh, the information posted online had been altered from what we think would be the original source. But there's just no way I can tell you with any granularity right now how that uh, came to be. Uh, we're, again, we're diving into this as, as strenuously as we can to try to understand that. Um, and in keeping with your point, I mean, we urge uh, all of you uh, to be very careful about uh, about how you report on this story, uh, since we know at least in some cases that information was was doctored. Yeah. Thanks. Very much. Yeah, be extra careful about that. Be extra careful about it. You know, don't share it. We don't want. There's an open criminal investigation going on, which you know, be careful about that. But also, a lot of it could be misinformation, and so the stuff that really, you know, if, if you can litter it within with misinformation, then you can sort of spoil the whole batch, right? One bad apple spoils the whole bunch. And you've got this situation where you, you just, well, that that's bad. The Russian casualties aren't what they say they are. They're actually 10 times that. And the Ukrainian casualties aren't that number. Divide that by 10. And then you'll get the real numbers. But the Russians, you know, fixed it. So you don't know. And that seems like it's about par for the course for the rest of this entire conflict. Bunch of fog of war. A lot of difficulty understanding exactly what's going on. But the United States government having a difficult time keeping their documents secure. So another question came out about whether this compromises the Ukraine efforts and really whether the United States is going to upgrade their systems. This guy had an interesting day today. He was very upset about a lot of different questions. And here he is asking John Kirby about the leaks. Second question on the classified documents. Um, has any of that leak led to a direct compromise of efforts to support Ukraine from this administration? And secondly, those in it who are in that business uh, say that the biggest problem we have is that we need software and hardware upgrades to guarantee that we don't get hacked. Is there any indication that the government is going to invest in the infrastructure to make sure that they can block that in the future? So on your first question, no. We continue to support Ukraine. That's not going to change. President's been... I'm not going to talk about the specific documents that are out there or speak to intelligence. I think you can understand why I wouldn't do that. Your question was, has there been any effect on support to Ukraine? The answer is no. We're going to continue to support Ukraine, as the president has said, for as long as it takes. On uh, technological upgrades, again, I don't have anything to speak to today. And I don't know that even if we did, that we would talk about that uh, in a public setting. But again, we're, we're only a few days into this. Uh, we've got an investigation going on at Justice. We got DOD looking at their processes over there. I think we need to let those two agencies do their job, do that work. All right, we've got one final question before we jump over to the consequences of this and what might happen with China, Taiwan, and other actors on the world stage. Good question. 
is this leak just the beginning? Will there be another bomb to drop? Is more data going to come out that is even more consequential and problematic? You tell us that you simply don't know what's coming next. Are you in, is the, is the U.S. government effectively in the position of, uh, of crouching and waiting for the next bombshell to hit on Telegram or Twitter? Uh, you're in a position where you simply don't know how long this is going to go on or how many documents are going to be published. We don't, we don't know what's out there, James. Um, we don't know uh, who's responsible for this. And we don't know if uh, they have more that the, they, they intend uh, to post. So we're watching this and monitoring it as best we can. But the truth and the honest answer to your question is we don't know. And is that a matter of concern to us? You're darn right it is. Yeah. So the answer is yes. Yeah. It's a long way of saying yes. Is the U.S. waiting and crouching, anticipating another bomb to drop? Yes, that's the answer. Yes, unfortunately, yes, we are. So, okay, well, that's great. So that's the military in action over there out of the White House, hanging out, wait for something else to happen. We'll see if there are consequences to any of this. Of course, there will be. One of those consequences looks like it will be happening with China. So simultaneous to this conversation, Kirby was also getting hit with questions about China versus Taiwan. Is this conflict evolving rapidly? Certainly looks like it. After the visit between Kevin McCarthy and the president of Taiwan, China announced that they are ready to fight, which is not good news for the world. This story came over from the AP. Then we'll look at their launch plans. The Taiwan ROC government responded. The US military is apparently launching their own training plans. And then we'll see what some of the reaction looks like around the world. But what is China saying? Well, we're ready to fight, is the story from AP News. Posted by Hu Zhang Wu two hours ago. China military ready to fight after drills near Taiwan. They declared on Monday that China is ready to fight after completing three days of large-scale combat exercises around Taiwan simulated sealing off the island in response to the Taiwanese president's trip to the United States. They called them combat readiness patrols named Joint Sword were meant to be a warning to the self-governing Taiwan when China and which China claims as its own. China, a foreign official said, the theater's troops are ready to fight at all times and can fight at any time to resolutely smash any form of Taiwan independence and foreign interference attempts. Resolutely smash. Now, these exercises were similar to ones conducted by China last August when it was launching missiles when Pelosi went over there. Military experts say the exercises serve as intimidation and an opportunity for practice by blo blocking sea and air traffic. Chinese actions follow a delicate mission to shore up diplomatic ties. John Kirby, who we'll hear from soon, says a lot of this was a major overreaction. Live fire exercises, focusing a lot on air strength. Taiwan reported more than 200 flights by Chinese warplanes in the past three days. Chinese state broadcaster, said the exercises were simulating the joint sealing off as well as waves of simulated strikes. We'll see a graphic that they posted up. The PLA said that its aircraft carrier was taking part in exercises encircling Taiwan for the first time. It showed video of a fighter jet taking off the deck of a ship posted on their social media chat called Weibo. Between 6 a.m. Sunday, 6 a.m. Monday, a total of 70 planes were detected and half crossed the median of the Taiwan Strait an unofficial boundary once accepted by both sides. Numbers are pretty serious. Among the planes, eight J-16 fighter jets, four J-1 fighters, eight Su-30 fighters, and other reconnaissance planes. Taiwan also tracked J-15 fighter jets, which are paired along with an aircraft carrier. By Monday, Taiwan's defense ministry reported another 91 flights by bombers as well as multiple fighter jets early warning aircraft and military transport planes. 
Now, obviously a troubling situation if you're on the island. I would imagine they're probably relatively used to this stuff, but it feels like things are continually escalating. China's military harassment of Taiwan has intensified in recent years with planes or ships sent towards the island on a near daily basis, numbers rising in reaction to increased hostilities. Meanwhile, the United States is also preparing their own activities. Now, this was a graphic of the actual launch plan. And the sun got this. They tell us that Chinese state TV shows a chilling Taiwan invasion blitz video as the forces practice the sealing off of the island. Look at this. Chinese TV has shown this propaganda video. And they're showing their fighter planes and their missiles being readied to be launched into Taiwan. And you can see what this looks like in the video itself. This is what the Chinese are doing. That's like a video game or something. They're even playing video game music. Okay, so that's just not great. Isn't Taiwan supposed to be a part of China, according to them? So they're going to blow the crap out of their own people? Sheesh. With heavy metal music on top of it. Hmm. Okay, so that's what the Chinese are doing. Now, the Taiwan, the Republic of China, which is the ROC, so you have the PRC, which is China, then you have the ROC, which is the Republic of China, which is Taiwan. And so they are responding. They made their own video. They said, what? How dare you? And there's the better. Here, we need to narrate this one. There's subtitles. It says the PRC is intentionally creating tension in the Taiwan Strait. Undermining peace and stability. And causing negative impacts on development of regional security. All true. Regarding their irrational actions, they say, we express our solemn condemnation, as do we. ROC armed forces will be well prepared to maintain solid combat readiness, commies. We firmly uphold democracy and freedom. and we will resolutely defend our national security. Ministry of National Defense, Republic of China, Taiwan. All right, better video than those commie Chinese PRC commies, and they are you know, making nice videos over there. Pretty cool. Does our military, does the United States do anything like that anymore? Or are they too busy talking about white rage and wearing their multiple face masks? I don't know. So the US military is responding. They have sent over some individuals to do some Navy training, so-called. Bloomberg is reporting this. It says the U.S. Navy is now challenging Beijing in South China Sea amid various Taiwan drills. We've got warships now conducting freedom of navigation operations. Hmm. Near the Spratleys. Move comes as the U.S. is set to hold military drills with the Philippines. A U.S. Navy destroyer, this story updated, April 9th, passed through waters claimed by Beijing in the South China Sea in a show of force that comes as the nation's military holds drills around Taiwan. Things are getting hot. It says the U... Wait a minute. This is ridiculous. I'm a Bloomberg subscriber here. Okay, we'll fix that after the show. It says the USS Milius guided missile destroyer conducted freedom of navigation 
operations in Monday. The ship sailed within 12 nautical miles or 22 kilometers of Mischus Reef, where China has its largest outpost and is closest to the Philippine territory. These operations demonstrate, they say, that the United States will fly, sail, and operate wherever international law allows, regardless of the location. The move risks stoking tensions with China, which has denounced similar operations as an infringement of its sovereignty and security. But this week, the U.S. is also planning to start annual military exercises with the Philippines, which are set to be larger than previous years <laughs> as ties warm between the longtime allies. On April 10th, they tell us that this, this is happening right now, apparently. U, the U.S. 7th Fleet says that on April 10th, the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer, the USS Milius, asserted navigational rights and freedoms in the South China Sea near the Spratly Islands, consistent with international law. Okay, so this is what's going on now. It's, things are getting a little hot over there. Nice ship floating around over there. Very nice crew on board. And hopefully they are sailing safely, representing the United States military in a show of force in the South China Sea. As China is threatening to nuke, metaphorically, Taiwan. The China military tracked and monitored the warship during its passage, which was done without the permission of the government of Beijing. The country's Southern Theater Command said in a statement, it said Be Beijing asserts the rights to more than 80% of the South China Sea, whose other claimants are the Philippines, Taiwan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Brunei. The U.S. refuses to recognize China's claims and regularly conducts what it calls freedom of navigation operations to challenge them. China, meanwhile, this week has held multiple exercises and other shipped and incursions near the Taiwan Island, 70 aircraft, and we've seen some of those other numbers. So pretty serious activity taking place over there. John Kirby was asked a lot about this, saying, hey, you know, it also looks like maybe the lines have been killed between Russia, between the United States and China. Is that the case? Between China and Taiwan, we know the president can pick up the phone anytime and call President Xi. We've been told this call is coming for months. Why hasn't he just picked up the phone and called President Xi to say, knock it off? The president looks forward to having another conversation with President Xi. Um, and we'll do that at the appropriate time. We'll certainly keep you apprised of that. Uh, it's important that those lines of communication stay open. Um, uh, the tensions are certainly high. Uh, right now, uh, we like to see this relationship get onto a better footing. Uh, and when it's appropriate for the two leaders to talk, then, then that'll happen. I want to stress that said, that we are and have been able to maintain lines of communication between our two countries, even throughout all these tensions. And in fact, we're still working to get Secretary Blinken back on a plane over to Beijing, as he was planning to do uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and we're in talks with the PRC about potential visits of uh, Secretary Yellen and Secretary Raimondo at their invitation, by the way, to talk about economic issues. And while it's not popular, would the president ever speak directly to President Tsai? I mean, would, would there be a conversation with there, Taiwan. perhaps? What is his take on this meeting between House Speaker McCarthy and President Tsai? Not uncommon for uh, presidents of Taiwan to transit the United States, uh, as President Tsai did. Uh, and it's also not uncommon for uh, Taiwan officials, certainly at the president level, to meet with members of Congress, as uh, President Tsai did. This is, uh, it's very typical. There's, again, no reason for any overreaction here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hello. No reason for any overreaction, just business as usual. And another question came in about whether there was confidence still in Taiwan. And John Kirby gets a little bit irritated here. He said, yeah, look, nothing has changed, okay? Overreaction from China. We have everything is status quo. Literally nothing has changed. We still adhere to the one China policy. Here is John. Um, what, what, how does the U.S. see the latest Chinese military exercises there? And is the U.S. confident that Taiwan and help from the U.S. could continue to deter China from military you know, solutions as they would see it? Because what they've been, you know, that saber rallying, we call it, was a lot more than sabers. 
and it's more than rattling at this point. Yeah, so we're monitoring the exercises as closely as uh, I think you, uh, you you might imagine. Um, they appear to be a reaction to something that didn't need to be reacted to in my previous answer. This is not uncommon for presidents of Taiwan, and this one in particular, to transit the United States. So there was no reason to react in any way, militarily or otherwise. They also reacted uh, rhetorically. Uh, but uh, we're very comfortable and confident that we have in place in the region uh, sufficient resources and capabilities uh, to protect our national security interests in the Indo-Pacific. I would add to your, more specifically to your second question, there's no reason for tensions across the Taiwan Strait to devolve into any kind of conflict. Nothing's changed about our one China policy. Nothing's changed about the fact that we don't support Taiwan independence. And nothing's changed about the fact that we don't want to see the status quo change unilaterally and certainly not by force. Just, just, just a quick one, if I might, on um, Macron's visit to China. Um, <clears throat> Let's pause on that one. We'll come back to this because I wanted to share this story with you before we got over there. There was an interesting article that made a video about earlier today, but it fits in perfectly here. The president of France had given an interview with Politico. One of the weirdest things, apparently they can censor themselves over there after the fact. It's a weird, strange thing. I guess this is a French thing. Maybe this is a European thing. I'm not familiar with how this works. But you can go in, you can have a conversation with somebody, you can say whatever the hell you want. In other words, you can have an interview. You can say, can I have an interview with you? Say, sure. Have a full conversation, say whatever you want. And then before the interview gets published, somebody who wants to protect you and actually shield you from being found out, I guess, can censor what the conversation was and delete portions of the conversation that never see the light of day. It's the weirdest thing. So you see the headline that says that Europe must resist pressure. America's followers says we can't be America's followers. And Macron had this great meeting that between him and President Xi, and they had an interview about it. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this story, all the way down, we'll keep going, just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Had a great interview. They're talking about what's going on. All the way at the bottom, look at this. You see this italicized paragraph? They write, as is common in France and many other European countries, I guess, was known as the Elysee Palace, they insisted on checking and proofreading all the president's quotes as a condition of granting the interview. Now, this violates political stando, political standards, but they said, okay, well, we'll speak because we want to talk to him directly. Politico insisted it cannot deceive its readers, wouldn't publish anything the president did not say. The quotes in this article were all actually said by him, but some parts of this were deleted. When he was speaking even more frankly about Taiwan, they were cut out. Those portions were cut out of the story. So it's way worse, I would imagine, than this, than what he said. They actually left in the toned down version of this. But the French people apparently are done with the United States. He says, if the tensions between the two superpowers heat up between Russia or between China and the United States, we won't have time nor the resources to finance our strategic autonomy hmm. and we'll become vassals of the United States. That's interesting because we sort of feel like we're bogged down in a European conflict. He suggested that Europe reduce its dependence on the extraterritoriality of the U.S. dollar, which is exactly what Moscow and Beijing want to do. Is Macron going to get called a Putin puppet? Is he going to get called a lot of the same names that many others on the other side have been called for questioning what's going on here? Is he? Now, this is this is because he's he's in actual alignment with stated goals of Moscow and Beijing. I don't know. Macron argued that Europe had increased its dependency on the United States. And Macron and von der Leyen took similar lines with Taiwan, saying China is very upset with the United States. And that Europe is more willing to accept a world where the Chinese are a regional hegemon. So very interesting that that type of language is coming out of the French. We're wondering, and people like Marco Rubio are wondering, whether it's still worthwhile to be pumping billions of dollars over there to engage in a European conflict. If they're not interested in working with the United States any longer. They'd rather hang out with China. So this question got brought up today 
in response to this, John Kirby gets asked. Just a quick one if I might, on um, Macron's visit to China. Um, you know, you know, you know, how did you react to his comments about, you know, wanting to create a third superpower and so on? Do you, do you wish him luck? Is it just rhetoric or is it kind of annoying to the, to the U.S. administration? I'll let the early... Uh, I'll let the LEC speak to President Macron's comments. Uh, uh, we are, again, comfortable and confident uh, in the terrific bilateral relationship we have with France and the relationship that the president has with President Macron and the fact that we're working together on so many different issues. Uh, and the French are stepping up in the Indo-Pacific. I mean, uh, they're conducting naval operations, even as you and I are speaking right now, uh, in, in the Indo-Pacific, all in keeping with a concerted effort by all of us, this vast alliance uh, or network of alliances and partnerships that we have uh, to continue to make sure that we're standing up for stability, security, prosperity, and a free and open Indo-Pacific. Thank you, Kareem, and thank you, Kirby. So the French, apparently, we shouldn't listen to what they're saying. It's still good. He's saying it's not so good. We would like to have a decoupling of our economies and go hang out with the Chinese, but our co government is saying not that big of a deal. We still feel like it's strong. Obviously that was not a good answer. So this other journalist asks a second time, hey, John, let me try again on the Macron comment. Can you maybe answer it this time? Please have to try again on President Macron. Do you have a response to him saying that essentially Europe doesn't want to be seen as following the United States' lead on China? Again, I'll, I'll let President Macron speak to his comments. We're very comfortable and confident in the strong alliance and the strong friendship that exists between our two countries. And the fact that we have been working together on the continent, excuse me, and elsewhere around the world with France, whether it's, I mentioned the Indo-Pacific, um, certainly on Ukraine, in Africa, uh, in the Sahel, going after uh, terrorist threats there. I mean, there's a lot of terrific bilateral cooperation just alone between the United States and France, we're focused on that. We're focused on making sure that together we're, we're, uh, we're meeting the national security requirements of both our peoples. It feels like there is a domino effect going on right now. Don't you feel it? A lot of the countries from elsewhere around the world are engaging in new relationships, new dates. They're finding new people to go out with. And the United States is sitting here like, this is weird. Man, we were the cool kid, but nobody wants to hang out with us now anymore. They're all hanging out with the Chinese. What gives? I don't know, but it doesn't look really good because now they're talking about using U.S. troops to go in there and help Taiwan. Two individuals from both houses of Congress are talking a lot about this. This individual is McCall. He is on the Foreign Intelligence Committee. And here's what he said over on Twitter. AZ Geopolitics was the person who clipped this on Twitter, talking from Taiwan specifically. This was a Fox News clip. And you can see McCall is saying U.S. troops in Taiwan are on the table. So Speaker McCarthy and yourself have said that multiple times now that we need to arm Taiwan now before there's any sort of invasion. What about U.S. troops? I think, you know, then you're talking about um, an authorized use of military force that would come out of my committee or a declaration of war, which we haven't utilized since World War II. Would you support that? I think if, uh, if, if China, Communist China invades Taiwan, uh, I think that is um, certainly if the American people support this, uh, the Congress will follow. How if the American people support this, have they ever asked us if we support any of these things or do they just go ahead and kind of do it? And then we have people like Mitch McConnell who come out and tell us that we have no choice but to essentially agree that this is the highest priority thing in the whole world. Such a possibility when it comes to Taiwan. In my exclusive interview with Chairman uh, McCall, he tells me that sending American men and women to war is the last resort. Conflict is the last resort. Deterrence is key here, but authorizing war powers is not out of the question. So you're saying that the option to authorize war powers is on the table? If Communist China invaded Taiwan, it would certainly be uh, on the table and, and something that would be discussed by Congress uh, and with the American people. Are they prepared to do this? Is Taiwan worth it? Uh, I can argue for a lot of reasons why it is. Here we go, inching closer and closer to World War III. And he's not alone. We know the very 
war happy senator known as Lindsey Graham is also on this team says that he's open to sending U.S. forces to Taiwan over from the hill. They tell us that he said on Sunday that he is open to sending U.S. troops to Taiwan to defend the island, saying strategic ambiguity just isn't working. He was asked if he would support authorizing force if tensions rise. Graham responded that Congress needs to ask itself whether the U.S. should have a defense agreement with Taiwan. Graham said, so the question for Congress should be, do we have a defense agreement with the island of Taiwan? We don't. Should we have one? But yes, I'd be very much open to using U.S. forces to defend Taiwan because it's our national security interest to do so. Same guy screaming about Ukraine. Graham's comments come on the heels of top GOP leaders meeting with the president of Taiwan, calling for greater peace and stability. Graham said that he would support sending aid to Taiwan because it is a democracy. Added that they would increase training and give the F-16s they need. Said, I believe in a one China policy, but I would be willing to fight for Taiwan because Taiwan is a democracy and we've stood with them for decades. House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall said the same thing. And so Congress is gearing up for this and I'm sure there will be more to come on that. Now, the final question of the day from John Kirby was about China and their plan. And this gave me deja vu like I never felt. Remember when we were about a year ago, about 14 months ago, when they were talking about the Russians not invading Ukraine. It's a lot of this kind of hemming and hawing from the Biden administration. Juan, right now, do you discern uh, any movements by China that would indicate an imminent plan to launch military actions against Taiwan? President Xi has said he wants his military ready by 2027. Plenty um, of time. But, the, but, but saying you want to be ready by a certain time doesn't mean that you have an intent. President Xi uh, 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 would have to speak to that specific intent himself. We're not seeing um, any overt indications that, that that kind of movement militarily is either imminent or inevitable. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said that same thing back in February of last year. So, all right, my friends, that is it for us on the day. We covered some good ground, a little bit of a shorter show today, kind of a weird news day, but we had some China updates, World War III percolating out there. We'll see what else happens with that. If we're able to catch these classified leakers or, uh, you know, what happens tomorrow. Of course, the classified document scandal will go on. More documents sounds like may be revealed. They've got open investigations into the various leakers and of course we'll continue to cover that one as well but that is it for us on the day we're going to be back tomorrow with proud boys the trial had a hiatus on friday and today so we'll be back in session tomorrow we've got a couple good motions to get through that we'll save for then but now my friends let's check in with you and see what you have to say about all of this and more before we go over to our member only after party and debrief on this lovely lovely evening we had a couple super chats here uh thank you very much from ian mack ian mack and i saw dolphin fan in the house let's say hi to ian mack ian says kirby flushed the entirety of his credibility down the toilet with the afghanistan withdrawal was not a disaster rhetoric yeah there was a pretty good video of that uh they took john kirby and they 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 superimposed him in the jet taking off with people hanging off the wheel wells of the aircraft and it wasn't, it wasn't good. He's like, no, I don't, I don't see what kind of chaos you're talking about. And, and there's people hanging off the aircraft. Go, oh gosh, it's pretty bad. So thank you very much for that one, Ian Mack. I appreciate you sending that one in. And then we had a Frank Burke also sent one in. Thank you, Frank, for that one. And that was it on the day from our YouTube friends. Let's say hello to our Rumble friends. Oh, and Dolphin Fan, Dolphin Fan invited 10 members over to our membership community, which is just outstanding. And we're very grateful for Dolphin Fan. We have an amazing membership community now, so you can join as a member. We do morning only streams. Our YouTube membership chat is getting very busy and we're very grateful for people like Dolphin Fan and others who help our community grow. So thank you very much for doing that and welcome everybody. And if you just joined on YouTube as a member, don't forget to go over to the post section, grab the telegram link, because when we're done here, we're going over to Telegram for our after party and on Locals as well. 
All right. And so that is it on YouTube. Let's say hello to Twitter. Let's say hello to Rumble before we wrap it up. It's a short Monday. Yeah, it's a short Monday. So yeah, it's a Chappaquiddick drinkers over there. Joe Maz, he says, you guys are pretty cool. You're pretty cool, Joe Maz, too. Thanks for being with us. G. Spensley says, Kirby doesn't blame Trump or the Russians. Yeah, it's probably Trump's fault, right? Trump is, how's he responsible for this? Can you believe what he's done? It's unbelievable. Responsible for everything. And actually, Trump actually said this, this was World War III. He posted something about that on True Social. Let's see if Trump has commented on the world affairs as of late. He's posting about Breitbart. He said, yeah, he did comment on some of these things. He said, the way the U.S. is going, we will soon be in World War III with no ammo, which is not a good position to be in if you're in a world war. He says, the best and only way to solve the problem with China is to get rid of Biden, along with every other problem we have. So you got to vote for Trump in order to get rid of Biden and correct the course of America, which is accurate statements. All right. And so shout out to our Rumble friends. Let's see. We got Joe Maz, Millie's over there. It's good to see everybody on Rumble. In God's Hands is in the house. Judy Casper Collins is over there. Good to see you, Judy. And Jacob Castro, Startle Magazine, Fairy Dance. Good to see you guys. All right, and so let's say hello to Twitter before we wrap it up, my friends. Who is watching over here? Holy moly, I have company. It's me and somebody else on Twitter. Amazing. Good to see you over there. Any uh, comments? <laughs> yeah, we got one from Paul Mino. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Hang on a second. Oh, we've got memes in the house. Okay, you're going to have to go over to Twitter. You're going to have to go over to Twitter for this one, but you can see what we've got. This is shared from Paul Mino. Here is what, here's a preview. Game bread is in the building. And, these and look who's coming up. It's Ron. <laughs> All right. So you're going to have to go check out the, the, the battle between Trump and Ron, courtesy of USC. It's over on Twitter profile, courtesy of our friend Sleepy Dogly. Good to see you, Paul. Hope you're doing well, brother. Here's another one. Kind of felt like a Monday. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, it felt like a Monday. The news was kind of weird. You know, we had a shooting, terrible. Rest in peace, everybody. Hopefully everybody's, you know, family's okay over there. Uh, or, you know, healing after this. It's a total catastrophe and a disaster. But that story, and then we have World War Three stories. It's been an interesting day. Now, tomorrow we'll be back on track. We'll have Proud Boys trial back in session. And we'll hit that story along with any other sort of post Easter updates as the media gets back in gear and as the Congress gets back in gear. But that, my friends, is it for us on the day. And so we are going to leave it right there. We are going to head over for our member only after party at watchingthewatchers.locals.com or on YouTube. If you're a member, come join us on Telegram, which is where the conversation will continue. And so we'll leave it there, my friends. Have a beautiful evening. I want to say before we leave, check us out, watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Don't forget to get your field of greens. If you need any extra energy and livelihood and green energy, that's the place to go. Fieldofgreens.com. Use code Robert when you check out. If you want to grab this mind map and use or grab this software, this mind map software, it's at spotlightlawyer.com slash mind map, or you can go to spotlightlawyer.com slash Trump if you want to get the Trump mind map in particular. Shout out to the mods and the meme smiths who keep everything nice and orderly and beautiful for us. Vienti Kiss Prime, K Bean, Just Cause, Play and Hooky, Ronnie Cole, our friend Zulu, Geo Mancy, Zach Nichols, John Allen, Sleepy Dog Lee, who's over on Twitter at Sleepy Dog Lee, which is where you're going to want to go to get that meme, along with our friend Jigam Gigam over on Locals. And thank you once again to Dolphin Fan for inviting us 10 new members and welcome to all the new members on YouTube. We'll see you hopefully on Telegram or tomorrow morning, either way, tomorrow on uh, tomorrow morning for our member only stream or on Telegram. But that, my friends, is it for us on the day. We will be back here tomorrow to do it all again. And I hope to see you right back here so that together with your help, we can shine that big, beautiful spotlight.
of accountability and transparency down upon our system with the hope of finding justice. Have a beautiful evening, my friends. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.